So the irony of this project is that the miter stand that I am using to build it with is also what's going to be in stored inside of it. So I'm building a case to put my miter saw stand because the cardboard box that Ryobi had is falling apart in storage and so I need something to put it in. So in a sense this saw is creating its own uh, house to live in. Here I have laid out all my measurements for the cross members that I will be putting on this uh, case that I'm building. This will be a 50 inch long by 11 inch wide by 10 inch tall case that I'm putting together. The wood pieces I'm using are two by two, two inch by two inch fur pieces that I picked up over at Lowell's hardware store. And I bought four of these pieces. They're eight feet long to cut up and make the frame for this case.
the screws that I'm using are two inch long decking screws and they weren't quite long enough to bite into the cross-section pieces of wood so that's why I'm using another wider bit to sink um, this in further for two reasons for that reason plus um, I also need to put sheathing on and I don't want the head sticking out because I need the sheathing to be um, stapled in flush to the sides So at this point in the project, I um, did not want to screw one screw into another that's already in the wood. So I needed to add one space over so I'd have a piece of wood to screw into. So I had to double up my in-between cross members so that way I could miss hitting the other screws that are already on the lower and upper frame in um, screwed in already and so that is the reason why I doubled these pieces up together and we'll be screwing them together and then you'll see later on how that works out I did manage to hit one screw uh, making my pilot hole uh, later on in the project but I just nicked it so I was able to get past it with the screw I was screwing in so this is just an effort to avoid hitting the screws that are already in the lower and upper frame when I go to put the cross members in
At this point in the project, I have put my top frame and bottom frame uh, laying on basically its side, if you can imagine that so that I could put the cross members in. It's, I need the flat surface of this table to keep it lined up the way that I need it lined up. If you try to lift it up and then put these on there and clamp it down you will not have the straight and level uh, table underneath it to get it squared off the way that you want it squared off. And now you can see why I doubled the pieces up because if I left it just a single piece like I was originally going to do, I would end up drilling into those screws. You can see them on the top part there where the holes are and I would end up hitting those. So instead I decided to go one over and hit that other piece of wood that's a cross member beside it so that I can join the two and everything that I join on here has got glue attached to it as well for all the joints because you're going to need as much strength as you can uh, to keep this case together and not just use screws it makes it extra strong this way At this point, I am going to take those two double pieces and they will be uh, facing a different direction. And this is so that I can slide the stand down inside the case. And um, so the ones that you see up above that I just stall installed earlier, that's going to be the bottom and now this will be the top so to allow me to get the space to slide that stand down inside the box I need to flip these up the other way so that it will go inside and um, originally I was going to have them all laying down but I got to thinking about it and I was thinking well how will I get the stand inside the box I need all the room I can get so that's why I'm going to flip these into a um, vertical position so the two on the bottom will be horizontal laying flat and then the one you see right here that I'm dealing with and then the one on the other end will remain vertical so that I can slide the contents into this box without having a lip there to have to go around these clamps that you see me adding periodically on this project are to keep those double pieces of wood from slipping out when I go to screw them in. I've had experiences in the past where I'll get everything lined up and I go to screw it in and it moves on me and trying to get it back into position after that is a huge pain and it's not very easy so that was why I decided to take these Jorgensen clamps. They're, Jorgensen makes some really good clamps. I've been impressed with them. I don't know how other people see them but they've I've been having success with them. They cost a little bit of money but they're worth the effort I think. And uh, so I use them to hold this in place so that I can screw it in without having it, uh, the screw somehow slip off and move my piece out of the way.
Here is where I'm using contact cement for the first time and I'm putting a skid plate on the bottom of this uh, box case to store the miter uh, stand so that when I go to put it in the back seat of the car I can just slide it across the seat and get it in place and so I had this uh, board it's um, it's a MDF board that I'm putting on there you're going to want to do this kind of gluing in a well ventilated place because that contact cement's pretty strong and so I had to put a mask on and then I eventually I put this whole thing outside on the front patio and, and let the fumes get out uh, and that's probably where I should have been doing all this gluing but I didn't think about it at the time so I had to put a mask on while I was doing this and uh, eventually then I moved this whole thing outside along with that tied box and sheet of plywood and all this stuff that I'm putting on here to weigh it down with and adhere the glue. I didn't want to put screws and screw that MDF down or any staples because over time from rubbing on surfaces it'll grind down and that stuff will pop up and rip up the back seat of my car so so now the box is painted in Ryobi colors which is a uh, lime green I figured if we're going to store Ryobi miter stands in this box we'll go ahead and paint it the same color as the product itself and we're going to install six inch T-hinges that have a black powder coat on them. At this point I'm trying to get these screws into the frame underneath for a better hold and then I realized on the top of this hinge I couldn't put all three screws in because then it would go into um, screwing the lid down to the frame itself and then I would never be able to open the lid because it was right over the frame the two inch by two inch frame underneath which when you measure it out is more like one by one but uh, that's the way they labeled it at Lowell's is two by two
Here we're installing a barrel bolt to uh, keep the lid closed. I miscalculated when I put that piece of wood there to screw it onto because I had it flush with the edge of the box but I didn't have the lid on it when I installed that. So now I'm trying to put a spacer in there to make it so it's the bolt can go flush with the lid itself and that turned out to be a fiasco I found one piece of wood in my stash of spare uh, trimmings I keep some of my cut in pieces from other projects in case I need a piece of wood to fill in somewhere and it worked out perfectly it was uh, oak wood and then I went to reinforce it with some extra screws and it split the wood uh, off camera uh, it's not on here but <laughs> I had a flawless um, build with this up until that point and then the very last touches I had to do it split the wood but I put some glue in there and I'm just gonna send it on its way once again to avoid have getting this screwed down to the frame so I can't open the lid I use different screws on the end of this barrel bolt that they appear more uh, metallic colored they're not black and they're really short screws but they're enough to hold that there so because the screws that came with it uh, would be too long and then I'd end up screwing this down to the frame and then never being able to open it and uh, I just did one hole at a time instead of pre-drilling all these holes because every time I do that something's always off-centered and they're not lined up right so I made sure that that barrel was through the hole also when I put the screws in so that way it would stay in line so the you can see there now I'm putting those uh, metal looking short screws in the front so it won't screw itself down in the frame and then the longer ones are in the back <laughs> 